I created these blocks to build a go-kart to race my friend Matt Denton. But half built, I realized that there were a lot of improvements that I could do on the blocks. And iterating these things in this scale, it is insane. So I created this scaled down version so I could improve the blocks in a more reasonable size. But I want to build more than just a go-kart with these blocks in the future. So this is just a quick and easy project to test the design of these blocks. Something simple. This is the main beam of the excavator arm. I've made a few improvements, I've designed new plates in many sizes. The screws have now a thread inside the base, so you can now screw a screw on the base of a screw. And you can do that as many times as you want. The screw design is parametric in Fusion 360, so just by changing one parameter, length, I can get any screw length that I want. And when I say any, I mean any. And all these beams are parametric in Fusion 360 too, so by changing the length parameter again, you can get any length you want. Of course, I have the STL files for all the beams up to 20 holes because that's quicker. This is the point where this project gets more interesting to test these blocks because now I need to add movement to this arm and for that I'm going to build a linear actuator. The idea is to rotate an acne screw with a servo, but servos usually only rotate 180 degrees. So I will have to convert them to continuous rotation servos. For that, I just need to open the servo, find the potentiometer that tells the servo controller where the output shaft is, and swap it for 2.2K resistors to make the controller think that it is always in the middle. I also need to remove this pin in here that blocks the gears moving past 180 degrees and close the servo. And that way, the servo controller always thinks that the output shaft is in the middle, so whenever you tell it to go left or right, it still thinks it's in the middle and keeps spinning the motor to reach that position. And the farther you ask it to go from the center, the faster it goes. So let's make an actuator with this. This is now a linear actuator, let's see if we can move the arm with it. If I insert the nuts backwards, I can use them to hold bearings. The linear actuator works, the arm moves up and down, so let's keep adding members.
Now it's time for the bucket and its linkage system. I've been studying excavators on the street a lot, so let's get to it. The bucket and the linkage system work. It was, this wasn't first try. I had to try a few designs before this one worked. So I think that the bucket needs now some tips. The teeth are in the bucket and I think this look nice, but if I end up testing this thing in the wild, which I will probably do, these plastic teeth won't cut it. So I went to PCBWay's website selected their 3D printing and service and dropped the exact same file that I used to print this teeth in here, but out of metal. And in a few days got back this way cooler metal teeth for the excavator bucket. Look at this. As you can see, not only does PCB way manufacture PCBs, by the way, the 4 and 6 layer board prices have been lowered. They also offer 3D printing in lots of materials and technologies. They also offer CNC machining, injection molding, sheet metal fabrication, and as you can see, their service is super quick and easy to use. And PCBWay also has an open source platform where makers and electronics enthusiasts like you and me can share their projects and ideas. Now that you have seen what PCBWay can do for my project, go and click the link in the description and find out what PCBWay can do for yours. And now let's keep moving this thing. We need now to make this entire thing rotate and for that I need to do a lot of work on this plate in here so I think I will have to remove the entire arm from it. I've been using this 2115 for bearings all over the build and the temptation would be to use this to build a rotating mechanism and try to spin the entire platform on it. But you and I know that this would break. So I built something stronger using the bearings of the regular Miranda blocks. And I don't know if this is strong enough, but definitely this is way stronger. Trying to keep up with the undersized servos trying to move giant things thin, I'm gonna try to use this to rotate this giant platform and for that I printed this that should go more or less here. It seems that I didn't think this completely through. And just to have the slightest of chances, I will use this tiny gear on the servo. Now I need to find the sweet spot for this tiny one in here. It seems to work with no weight, so let's see if it still works with the arm installed. Now I'm going to need some counterweight, for sure. I will install the arm, move to one side like a real excavator. Let's see if I don't regret it later.
Let's see if we can now slowly raise the arm without breaking anything, obviously. I will now retract the arm and see if we can spin the platform. It does work with the arm retracted, but I will try now to fully extend the arm and see if we can still spin it without breaking anything, of course. I think this should be enough, right? Let's see if I'm going to clear everything and let's try to spin it. Well, it seems to work just fine. This is not very strong, but this is just a test to find the weakest points. And the next part will be assembling and installing the threads for it. And if you are wondering how can I manage to print so many parts for each project, that's because Polymaker is the proud filament sponsor of this channel and they keep sending me crazy amounts of filament. That's how I keep printing. So go and send them some love. I will give more information about the blocks in the next video. So don't forget to subscribe and as always, thanks a lot to all my members and Patreons. And now please go and make some day!